So I've just taken my first gather of glass and I'm just going to shape it a little bit. I'm going to reheat it so the edges will be nice and hot and I'll be able to roll up those little chips. Little chips are very densely colored uh, glass that's made specifically for glass blowers to decorate and color their pieces. And I've flattened the shape of the glass so I just collect two stripes of all these chips. I'm now going to heat them up and melt them in. And then I will uh, smooth it down into the surface and begin the twisting process. smooth down, it's symmetrical, I've got a nice twist on the upper part of it. I'll reheat it once more and I'll twist it and bring that twist right to a sharp point. make very sure to keep the shape and the patterning very centered and symmetrical. Yeah, it's really hard because the glass is really, really low in the furnace. This is probably a third less than I would normally gather. So now it's been nice and smoothed out, made perfectly symmetrical. Just going to fire polish the surface and see if I can start the bubble just before my last gather. If the bubble with the air is out of the pipe, it just makes life a little bit easier. So I'm just waiting for it to cool a little bit to stiffen it up and then I'll go and put a layer over this. Okay, so I'm going to put the cover gather on. So now the colored glass is cased between two layers of clear. I want to make sure this uh, outer layer is nice and symmetrically distributed around the inner layer. I want a little bit extra at the bottom, but I want it evenly distributed around. And I'm using the wet newspaper to shape the piece. The Wall Street Journal. is right, it's flexible, and you can tailor them a little bit to the type of work you're doing. Whether you need it really thick or really big or really small. Now the core of this is still a little bit cool, so I have to reheat it before I can blow it anymore.
And because I want the bubble to be fairly round, I want to make sure that I have my exterior shape established before I begin the blowing process. So I've blown into the pipe, trapped the air under pressure with my thumb, and the air wanting to lower its pressure can only do that by expanding. If the glass is soft enough, the air can expand the bubble. First I'm going to shape it and chill it a bit. So I'm just going to fine tune the shape just a little bit and then I'll transfer it so I can open up the lip. But basically that's the end of the blowing. lower than we usually drain it to change the pot. Yeah. Give it time. So the actual time spent blowing is a very, very small part of the actual process, but it is the, uh, the thing that made glass from something that was very, very precious, because there was very little you could do with it, and it was very difficult, to something that could be used to make regular household items. So I'm going to stretch the neck out a little bit, which will also fit it out. I'm going to accentuate the twist of the color in the neck. Then I'll trim it to make it straight and even, and I'll flare the lip right out. just changing the distribution of the heat from primarily in the body and the base, which is what it was on the pipe, to being the neck and shoulder and lip area. So I'll do that once more, and then I'll heat it up and trim it. So 
So I've got a nice tight twist on the neck. So when I flare it open, it'll have a nice spiral on it. Don't try that at home. I want to close the neck down so it's the right size for a stopper. And I'm very aware of the curvature of the shoulder because that's an important part of the, of the design to me also. If you don't have the right curvature, the piece just won't look right. And the opening is centered to the body. And since I put the perfume bottles away upside down, I want to make sure the shoulder is not so warm that the teeth will distort. And there is the perfume bottle.